There is a lot of good things going on at Newcastle United right now, both on and off the pitch. And the CEO, Darren Eels, has spoken on a lot of the things that he hopes to bring to the club very soon, with a big focus on fans and fan interaction. Uh, he's even hinted at a possible fan zone or fan events around the stadium or in the city centre. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about in today's video. What are the possibilities for a fan zone or fan events? And what can Newcastle fans expect to see in the next few years? Yes, guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Uh, as you can see, I have a guest on the channel today. It is Eddie from Tyneside Life. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for inviting me on the channel. No, absolutely. Eddie has actually just given me a guided tour around the outside of St. James's Park, which was fantastic, by the way. I learned a lot that I didn't already know. Uh, Eddie runs these tours, don't you? Yeah. So I will put the link down in the description for that one. Uh, it was good fun. Learned a lot. So be sure to go and check it out. Uh, but we are here today to do a video together and discuss uh, a little bit on what Darren Neal spoke about in his recent BBC Radio Newcastle interview. Now, Eddie actually did a video covering a number of points, so be sure to go and check that out. But in today's video, we're going to sp uh, specifically talk about fans and fan interaction. Not only uh, did Darren Neal say he wants to get more fans into St. James's Park, but he also said how he wants to get more fans involved with the club altogether. So we're going to get into all of that in today's video. Right then, Eddie, we've had a little walk around to the east stand of St. James's Park. Uh, one of the things that Darren Eels did talk about was wanting to get more fans inside of St. James's Park. Uh, we aren't going to talk about this for too long because we could probably stand here and talk all day, uh, like we actually tried to do last week when it absolutely chucked it down. So it's nice to be back with some nicer weather. But I thought I'd just pose the question to you, Eddie, uh, with the difficulties we have around St. James's Park, uh, like the east stand here with the buildings to our uh, left do you think it's a possibility to increase St James's Park do you think that's something Darren Eels will do short answer is yes and it's not just <laughs> Darren Eels um Medad Gudusi and Amanda Stavely were interviewed in the Athletic last May where they um laid laid these uh, plans out broadly speaking um but these aren't problems that are going to be solved in the short to midterm as Darren Eels says it's a it's a conundrum yes you know we have a unique <laughs> stadium in a, new, a unique geographical location right yeah. next to the city centre. It isn't straightforward. And I take the owners in the PIF to their word. I don't think there's any secrecy. I don't think there's anything to read between the lines. I think they've got modest ambitions in terms of stadium expansion. I think they're going to look at other avenues that you're going to cover in this video yes. to satisfy the fan base. I think they have massive ambitions in terms of world-class training facilities, yeah. but modest ambitions probably around about 60,000 uh, eventually in a few years time for St James's Park. Yeah, no, let's let's hope so. We do want to try and get a few more seats in there, a few more people in there. Uh, but talking of fans and fan interaction, we're going to talk a little bit about fan zones before and after the games and potentially even fans who can't get to the games as well. So let's start off by heading to Leeser's Park and uh, we'll have to talk about it in there. Right then, Eddie, we've taken a walk around the back of St James's Park, stood in Leeser's Park. Uh, if you said to me, where should we put a fan zone before, after the games, potentially even during the games that we'll get onto a little bit in, a, uh, in the video? Where would you put it? I would just say Leeser's Park. Uh, but we've spoken a bit off camera about this one and we don't actually think it's the best place for it. I mean, you're right, Rob. At first glance, it seems like an obvious place. You've got this huge grassed area. Yeah. Um, but there are some complications with it. I mean, you're right, you can get two or 3,000 people in here with a, with a wristband on, pay a five pound each or whatever, and everybody in front of a big giant screen can have some beers and watch the match. <laughs> so at first glance, you think, wow, yeah. here it is. But then there's some complications. Uh, first of all, it's, um, it's a grade two listed park, so it, 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 it has some uh, protections, yeah. uh, environmental protections. Um, but also as well, um, it's exposed to the elements. Yes. And of course, Britain being Britain, it's going to rain a lot. You don't want two, three thousand people in here stamping all over the grass. <laughs> They'd ruin the environment of this beautiful park yeah. uh, in a heartbeat. Um, so that causes complication itself. So you're going to have, probably have to make some sort of semi-permanent structure with with um, boarding on the bottom. Mm. And then, then it all starts to get a bit complicated. Um, I mean, I had an interview with Marion Williams, who's the chair of the Friends of Lisa's Conservation Group, which is also a season ticket holder and lives in Lisa's yes, Terrace. Yes, <laughs> she's a lady who knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, I mean, she's um, suggested that 
they would be prepared to sit at the table, the Friends of Leeser's Conservation, with Newcastle United if they wanted to, to do something with the park to help the club, perhaps like a fan zone, uh, with some sort of financial sweetener to, to keep the sustainability of the park for the future. Yeah, first glance looks yeah. great. There are some complications. No, absolutely. And we are going to talk a little bit, as I say, on uh, some other ideas that we've got, specifically going into the idea of getting fans involved during a game. Uh, as Darren Neils has said, he wants fans involved as much as possible. A couple of other locations uh, that kind of got brought up were uh, the Quayside. Uh, we actually saw the Rugby League World Cup do their own fan zone down on the Quayside. That was really for before the game, after the game. We even have the road out the front of St James's Park that we spoke a little bit about. The idea of potentially having a little uh, more to offer there before and after the game. I mean, these are all suggestions, but still come with the same issues of um, it can't be a permanent structure. It would have to be set up and put down every game. And it depends how big you would want to make them. I think outside of St. James's Park would be great to have more happening, but maybe wouldn't quite tick that fan zone box that maybe we're looking for. Another complex issue, of course, uh, I'm not an expert on these, I'm not a commercial expert yeah. or a CEO, if I was, I yeah. wouldn't be making YouTube videos. <laughs> so we're just kind of fudging, uh, you know, in, in layman's terms, what we think life would look like. But Darren Eels has said he's determined to get more fans involved with the club, those who kind of get inside the ground. Uh, there are probably two types of fan zones, which I think you're yeah. touching on, is um, temporary ones like um, behind the Gallagher and maybe it's on the quayside, but also the opportunity to exploit commercial revenue um, opportunities for permanent yes. venues that we already have yeah. in the city centre and I think you might be coming yeah Eddie, <laughs> Eddie's, no no Eddie's, Eddie's spot on there because we have spoken and we do actually think there's a few venues that uh, Newcastle could make use of that are already ready to go uh, so let's have a little talk about them Right then, we've come round to the other side of St James's Park with a fantastic view of the stadium and the city centre. We've spoken about the fact that there are a few issues with Leeser's Park, with the quayside, having to build something up, pull it back down again every weekend for before the game, after the game, as I say, potentially even during the game. Why build something when we have a whole host of potential arenas right behind us? Yeah, I was fascinated and uh, listening to Darren, Z Darren Eels' interview with BBC Radio Newcastle. Um, you can see why he's such a popular and very good at what he does. Uh, he's come to Newcastle. He'll see the stadium location and the opportunities here from a commercial perspective. It's like a giant um, toy room. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he probably just doesn't know where to start, all these opportunities. Um, so you mentioned about having conversations with local with stakeholders, yeah. uh, including the local council over various matters. Those won't be in detail at the moment, I'm sure. You'll be networking, you'll be building relationships, you'll be getting a feel for the city. Uh, you'll, be, um, you'll be finding out what Newcastle United, the club, can do for Newcastle yeah. and its economic growth and vice versa. So there'll be some kind of broad and hypothetical conversations going on. But you're right, there are some um, permanent structures that are already here, like the Life Centre, yeah. that could use as a fan zone, uh, the NX Centre on Westgate Road, I think, which is going to be one of the venues for the World Cup. Uh -huh. But also the, the temporary stack behind yeah, Central yeah. Station as well, plus one or two others that I might not have thought of. And the concept would probably be um, having some sort of wristband yeah. where you go to these venues, I don't know, five pound, 10 pound, <laughs> you may get a bit of a drink discount, some food discount, yeah. where you watch a giant screen, watch the match. So you're involved with Newcastle yeah. United. You're watching the match unfold. And if you think of Shearer's Bar as well, that screens the match on Saturdays. Yeah when everybody's in watching the match, Shiro's bar shows the match. Darren Eels mentioned um, bar crawls, what they yeah. call in America. I did look at this, um, we call them pub crawls, obviously. Yeah. But it's an organized pub crawl, if you like, where you get a wristband again, there'll be uh, designated bars, you'll go out in groups, you'll have paid 10 pound a head or whatever it is, yeah. uh, there'll be participating bars on a map, <laughs> you'll go around Newcastle City Centre um, with or without the intention to watch the match, but there might be pubs who want to sign up with Newcastle United that can also screen the match in, in one of their private rooms, yeah. possibly, um, which also brings into the conversation of uh, Newcastle United TV. Yes, you yes. Know, and if I knew more about these things, I'd be making a lot of money, Rob. But, <laughs> but I, I, in, in theory, I think these are 
or, or possibilities that he's going to be looking into? Yeah, no, absolutely. And you've kind of brought it up there, so we'll we'll keep rolling. Uh, we've talked a little bit about getting more fans involved locally. Uh, the other thing that Darren Neal spoke a lot about was getting fans involved overseas. Uh, you talk about commercial revenue, uh, being able to you know send the. NF, uh, NUFC TV channel out there um, I think that's something that we could potentially see on the horizon Yeah I can't say any further than that Rob I'm not an expert at these things yeah. but I can't really add any more than what you've just said but he's, he's dead keen on getting a global interest in Newcastle United for us to be a global brand and how is he going to do that to reach to fans in Saudi Arabia China, yeah. Africa the United States um, and that's probably going to be through Newcastle United TV Yeah Oh, definitely. Well, Eddie, we've spoken quite a bit about how uh, a fan zone for Newcastle United would be a big positive for the club. Uh, there is also the question of whether it could potentially be a negative for the city. Uh, the idea that a lot of people will go to uh, the bars in the city behind us to now take them away from their local pub and coming into something run by the club would no doubt help Newcastle United but could potentially have a negative effect on some of the bars surrounding the, the, the stadium. Yeah, you raise a good point, Rob. Um, Darren Neils did say in his interview that uh, there isn't a perfect solution to this. Uh, they're not going to have a solution that's fair to everybody, but commerce and economy is the survival of the fittest. You know, and he's going to exploit every possibility to... Uh, I, I do, nothing strikes me has been cutthroat about Darren Neils. Yeah. He, he's motivated to do what's best for Newcastle United, but also he's invested in the city. He wants to do what's best economically for the city. So um, I'm sure you'd find a way to try and cushion that somehow. Um, but yeah, you're right. Um, there's not going to there's not going to be a perfect solution. Yeah, and uh, that raises the next question: If we have so many, and that's why St James's Park is so loved by the Newcastle fans, or a big part of why it's so loved is because it is city centre. Uh, for a lot of away fans, it's one of the best in the country because of where it is in the city centre: bars, restaurants, nightlife, uh, daytime. It's got everything. So the question as well is. Do we need a fan zone? Uh, and you guys can let us know that down in the comments below. Uh, thanks for having you on, Eddie. It's been great fun. If you haven't checked out Eddie on his channel at Tyneside Life, be sure to go and do so down in the description. Uh, as I say, let us know your thoughts on a potential fan zone, fan interaction down below. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you later.